Welcome to Amazing Dinosaurs. I'm Dave, and this is a collection of Jurassic World T-Rexes versus Steve from Minecraft. Let's first start by unboxing the Steve figurine. And here it is. Steve is wearing the blue pants with a teal colored shirt. And overall, it's a pretty cool figure. You can move the arms up and down. You can move the legs back and forth. You can move the head side to side and even up and down a little bit. And this Steve figure actually has hands. So you can remove this and then there's a spot to put in some tools. Plus, Steve came with these other accessories that we will check out in a little bit. But first, let's meet our first T-Rex to face off against Steve. This is the super colossal Tyrannosaurus Rex in the custom painting. This is one of my most unique T-Rexes in the collection because it has this fiery styled paint job all over it. Plus, this super colossal figure actually has a stomach compartment all the way down here so you can actually feed it smaller dinosaurs and it'll be stored in its stomach here. Now then, let's go ahead and face this off against Minecraft Steve. All right, look at that size difference. Steve is way over here. It's a tiny little figurine. I bet he could even fit inside of the T-Rex's mouth. And it's interesting, they both got different color combos going on. Steve is in a more blue and cool colors, whereas the T-Rex is in fiery red tone. The next T-Rex to face off is another custom colored Tyrannosaurus Rex, but this one is in a camouflage green coloring. I think this coloring is way better than the original painting, especially around the face here. Check out those teeth and all the shading around its eyes and the rest of its face. So now let's face this T-Rex off against Minecraft Steve. And as you can see, there's still a huge size difference between the two, although this one is a bit more closer in size than the super colossal one. And this T-Rex actually has a really cool chomping ability that chomps downwards. I don't think you or I or Steve would want to be in the way of those chompers. Our next T-Rex is another green T-Rex, but this is actually the original painting. This is the Legacy Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex. It has a darker green body with some gray and tan detailing along the top of its back, and it has a button at the top of its head for the chomping action. And now let's face that off against Steve. And the T-Rex is still quite a bit larger. You can see that it stands way over Steve's head still, although they're getting closer in size now. What do you think? Would Steve stand a chance in a fight against a T-Rex like this? I think we gotta give Steve some tools, which we'll give him in the next round. I think this next T-Rex is a little bit larger. This is the new 93 Real Field Jurassic Park Tyrannosaurus Rex. And it's called the Real Field T-Rex because its skin is actually a soft rubber, unlike most of the figures nowadays, like these ones over here that are hard plastic. Plus, this T-Rex has a stomach compartment as well. So just like the super colossal T-Rex, you can feed this smaller one small dinosaurs. And finally, it's got some sound effects as well. It's time to face off against Steve. And yeah, this T-Rex is a whole lot larger than that green one over there was. And just like the super colossal T-Rex, we've got two different styles of coloring. We've got the cool blue coloring over here with Steve and the fiery red coloring over here. Although this one looks a lot more realistic than the custom colored painting over here. Let me know in the comments below who do you think would win in this fight. But before you comment, I'm going to give Steve a tool here now. And that tool is his mighty sword. And this thing is actually made of metal. So this is actually quite heavy. Whereas the actual Steve figurine over here, I think is entirely made out of plastic. So now let's go ahead and give him the sword. And now Steve is ready to face off with the T-Rex. Comment below, who do you think would win in a battle? The next T-Rex is a very unique one. This is actually a deconstructed Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now this T-Rex is made so that you can actually see the insides of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. You can see some intestines there, there's a bunch of bones, and you can actually lift off the ribs right here to reveal what I think is the stomach underneath. That's pretty crazy looking. So now it is time to face off against Steve. And since this T-Rex can't even stand up, Steve is actually the taller one in this competition. And in fact, 
that it actually looks like Steve already defeated this T-Rex because the T-Rex is already taken apart and totally destroyed. All right, way to go, Steve. Next up is another orange-brown T-Rex here, pretty similar to the deconstructed T-Rex that we saw right here, but obviously this one still has all of its limbs, although you can see quite a bit of battle damage on its tail, on its leg, on its side, and even on its face. So this T-Rex figure is in much better shape than the last. So now it's time for the face-off. Now once again, Steve is way shorter than the T-Rex here. And he's got a sword, but that might not do it. Let's go ahead and add his final accessory, which is this armor plating here. And these are actual real metal. So let's go ahead and add them on. Alright, now Steve is armored up and ready for anything. And I gotta say, with all this actual real metal armor plating, Steve is a lot heavier than he was originally. It's pretty cool that they actually used metal for the armoring. And now, who do you think would win in this competition? Steve or the Tyrannosaurus Rex? The next T-Rex is the smallest T-Rex that we've seen yet in this collection. This is a juvenile T-Rex and it is actually from Jurassic Park. You can see the tattoo on its leg right there. So this figure is quite old. And like many of the old Jurassic Park figures, it has the real feel skin. So it's a soft rubbery skin instead of hard plastic. And it's got a big old battle damage right on its side right there, which is pretty cool. Now it's time to face off the juvenile T-Rex versus Minecraft Steve. But wait, I've actually got a little surprise for you. And that is I actually bought another set from Minecraft. This is the wolf set from the Diamond Level series. And here is the wolf figurine. It's a bit smaller than Minecraft Steve, but it's still quite poseable. You can see that you can move its torso up and down. You can move its tail and each of its legs individually, as well as its head. Plus, it came with these four accessories. First is this extra head that has different eye shapes compared to the original one right here. It also comes with this collar that you can put on the wolf. as well as this piece of meat right here and a bone. So let's go ahead and set the wolf right next to Steve. And here we are with our face off. Who do you think would win? Steve and the wolf or the juvenile T-Rex? <laughs> T-Rex here is a similar size as the last, although it's very different in its coloring. And it should be noted that this is actually a model Tyrannosaurus Rex. So it is a hard plastic all over and it does not move at all. It is stuck in this roaring pose, but it's still pretty cool. It's got some pretty decent coloring. It's got the yellow eyes and then tons of shading along its body as well. So let's face it off against Minecraft Steve. Oh, look at that. They're almost the same in height. The T-Rex is a little bit taller still. And this T-Rex sure looks fierce but Steve is fully armored up with his sword and with his wolf companion. So comment below, who do you think would win? The T-Rex or Steve and the wolf? Here is one of our final T-Rexes. This one has some cool orange brown coloring with the black stripes all along its back and on its legs. And like the last figure, this is a model figure. So there are no joints or arms or jaws that move on this figure, but it does have some pretty sizable teeth. And now let's face off against Minecraft Steve. And look at that, Steve is finally taller than one of the T-Rexes here. And not only that, but I think Steve is actually heavier than the T-Rex figure here as well. So now that the sizes are a lot more even, who do you think would win? Comment below. <laughs> Here is our final T-Rex and by far the smallest one. This one is from Jurassic World and it looks like it's mostly brown in color, but it does have this reflective gold coloring all over its body. Plus, despite how small it is, you can still open and close the mouth. That is pretty cool. Now let's face it off against Minecraft Steve and look at that size difference. Steve is probably three times the size of this Tyrannosaurus Rex and even the wolf is larger than the T-Rex 
it's at least maybe like twice the size of this teeny tiny T-Rex. Now this does not look like a fair fight at all. Let's first start by checking out the Mario figure that will be facing off against the Predators. This is the official Super Mario, it's a me Mario. And here he is, it's quite a large figure, and this one has some pretty cool features to it. First off, his overalls are actual real fabric. You can see here that I can move it around, and that's really cool, that definitely gives it a whole added dimension. And the rest of the figure is a hard plastic, but it is surprisingly adjustable. You can move the arms in all directions, as well as the legs, you can even bend the knee joint as well, and then you can swivel the head side to side as well. And the coolest part is that this comes with a variety of action features and sound effects. The first special feature is when you press Mario's hand, it comes with some sound effects. So with his right hand, it has the coin collecting sound effect as well as his voice. And with his left hand, let's see what that sounds like. So he's got a punching sound effect on this side. And there's also sound effects in his shoes when he kicks something. It's got that little sound. And then his voice, of course. And then the final sound effect button is on his hat. When you press it, he's got more voice sound effects and music. Now it's time to check out the first predator in this collection. And this is the super colossal Endoraptor figure. This is one of the newest super colossal figures that Jurassic World has released. It's got the iconic gold stripe running down the side and the black body. And my favorite part are these teeth right here. I love how they stick out and intertwine with the top row. That's so cool. Plus like all of the other super colossal figures, this Endoraptor has a stomach compartment so you can actually feed it smaller dinosaurs through its mouth down to its stomach. So now it is time to face them off. Mario versus the super colossal Endoraptor. Now right off the bat here, you can see there is a huge size difference between the two. The super colossal Endoraptor is by far the largest. Now Mario has some cool sound effects and buttons and the Endoraptor has some really great texturing as well as that ability to eat smaller dinosaurs. So who do you think would win in a fight? The Endoraptor or Mario? Our next predator to face off against Mario is this huge Tyrannosaurus Rex. This T-Rex figure is from the Jurassic World Dominion movie, and it comes in this dark brown coloring with the black detailing on the top of its back and elsewhere. It's got the bright yellow eyes, and it has an action on its tail to swing the torso back and forth and to chomp the jaw. Check out how big that chomp is. Plus, it looks like there's actually some room in there to fit smaller dinosaurs if it wants to eat some. And now it's time for the T-Rex to face off against Mario. These two figures are a whole lot closer inside, although I think the T-Rex still wins the prize for being taller. And in terms of weight, let's see which one's heavier. This T-Rex actually isn't that heavy, and Mario here, I think, is a bit heavier. So this one's taller, but Mario is the heavier figure. Now then, who do you think would win in a fight? This T-Rex figure? or the Mario figure. The next predator to face off is this super special Spinosaurus figure. This Spinosaurus figure is pretty rare. It's in the blue coloring with the yellow detailing on its spine, on its legs, and on its face too. It has a button on the top of its head for the chomping action. But the main reason why this is so special is because of this hidden battle damage on the side that you can open up and reveal its insides. You can actually even lower the ribs as well. And then there's a hidden button over here to make the stomach swirl back and forth. And look at that, there's even some liquid 
inside of it. So now let's face it off against the one and only Mario. Now with the Spinosaurus standing up all the way, it looks like it's a little bit taller than the Mario figure, or just about the same if you lower it down a little bit. And they've both got their special features here. The Spinosaurus with the massive battle damage on the side, and Mario with his tons of sound effects, like his fists, his feet, and then the button on the top of his head too. Mario. And there's also the question of which one is heavier. Let's first check out Mario here, pretty heavy. And then the Spinosaurus. Actually, they're probably right around the same weight. So even though the Spinosaurus is taller, they're the same weight. Now, who do you think would win, Mario or the Spinosaurus? For our next predator, we've got the mighty Giganotosaurus dinosaur. This figure is from the Jurassic World Dominion movie, and I'm sure you remember the awesome battle it had against the T-Rex and the Therizinosaurus in the movie. Now this figure's pretty cool, it's got the green body with the black detailing, it's got the huge spine running along its back, it's got a swivel tail here, which is pretty unusual for figures of this size, and it has two action buttons on its body, there's a hidden action button right here that activates this huge huge swinging chomping action. It's got some sound effects too. And then there's actually a hidden action button underneath its tail here for a smaller chomping action. The pretty cool roaring too. So now let's face it off against Mario. And now it looks like Mario is the taller figure of the two. The Giganotosaurus is maybe three or four inches smaller than Mario. And since Mario is now the larger figure, I would bet that he's the heavier figure. Let's see here, there's Mario. Now let's lift up the Giganotosaurus. You know, it's pretty close, but I think Mario is the heavier figure now. Now the Giganotosaurus is a very fierce predator, but Mario is no easy fight. Who do you think would win, the Giganotosaurus or Mario? next predator is a massive pyroraptor figure. This I believe is the largest pyroraptor I have in my entire collection. It's got some really cool feather texturing all over its body, especially along the back of its face on its back and on its tail. It's got some huge marbled eyes as well. And this figure is pretty special because it is actually battery operated. So there's a little switch here that I'm gonna turn on and it'll come to life. And you can actually interact with it by pressing right here and check that out. It moves, it chomps, and it has sound effects all on its own. Now let's bring it over to face off against Mario. And this Pyroraptor is already ready to fight. Now this time Mario is quite a bit taller than the dinosaur predator figure here. There's probably a five or six inch difference between Mario and the Pyroraptor figure, but which one is heavier? Let's see, Mario here is decently heavy. And the Pyroraptor here, let's lift it up. Oh, uh, you know what? I think that the Pyroraptor is heavier this time. And that kind of makes sense, because, I mean, look at the size of this thing. There's a lot of plastic on this, and there's motors and batteries in this thing as well. Now, this Pyroraptor figure is one of my favorites because it is battery operated, and you can interact with it. You can get all sorts of chomping actions and stuff. But Mario can do many of the same thing, but just in his own way with the sound effects and with the music. But either way, who do you think would win in a battle? Mario or the Pyroraptor? The next predator dinosaur is the Yangchuanosaurus figure. This predator dinosaur is also from Jurassic World Dominion, specifically from the Massive Action series. It's got the green body with the yellow underbelly and the brown detailing on top with the orange crown on the top of its head, which is one of my favorite things. And it's got some massive actions. First, you can move the tail back and forth to swing the head and torso up and down and back and forth. And there's a button on its tail to chomp the jaw too. Now let's face this predator off against Mario. And now the predator dinosaur is a whole lot smaller than Mario. Both in height, there's probably a four inch difference between the two in terms of which one is taller, and in weight. I bet you that Mario is a lot heavier than this Yangtronosaurus. 
and it certainly is. This dinosaur figure doesn't have any motors or batteries in it, so that's what makes it quite a bit more lightweight, besides the fact that it's a whole lot smaller. So now, who do you think would win in a fight? But before you answer, I've got a bit of a surprise for you, and that is this massive Bowser figure from the Super Mario Bros. movie. I figured it'd be cool to get another figure from the Mario series, so let's open it up. And here is the Bowser figure. And this figure is pretty cool. It's got 14 different points of articulation, so you can move the arms, the wrists, the legs around in all different directions. He's got some pretty cool coloring too with the yellow, and that fades into the green, and it's got these spikes all over its shell. But the coolest part about this figure is a hidden feature. When you press this spike, he'll actually breathe smoke, which is actually just steam, but let's check it out. Oh, there we go. You can see it a little bit right there. It is pushing out steam, so it looks like he's breathing out fire. Yeah is pretty cool. So now we actually have a three-way face-off. Mario versus Bowser versus the Yangchuanosaurus. Which do you think would win? Next up is another mighty predator. This one is called the Ekrixinatosaurus. This dinosaur figure is from the new Epic Evolution series. So this figure has some different features that you won't see on older figures. Firstly are its teeth. They're now made out of a soft rubber, so they look a bit more realistic than they used to, I think. And instead of an attack button, it has this dial on its back that you spin back and forth for the chomping and sound effects. That's pretty interesting, but I'm not sure which I like better, the buttons or these spinning dials. And now it's time to face off the Ekrixinatosaurus versus Mario. And now there's even a larger size difference between the two. The Ekrixinatosaurus is probably half the size of Mario here. And Bowser over here might be around the same height, but he's definitely a whole lot heavier than the dinosaur figure. So let me know in the comments, who do you think would win, the Ekrixinatosaurus or Mario? The next predator against Mario is another similar looking dinosaur compared to the last one, but this one is called the Scorpio Venator. It's got a light brown coloring over most of its body with a lighter underbelly and some bright orange detailing along its neck and on its face. And this figure is older than the Epic Evolution series, like the last figure we saw, because you can see that the teeth are a hard plastic and they aren't quite as detailed and realistic looking as the other one was. But this figure still has a really cool chomping action when you press down on its body. Check out that full body chomping effect. And now it's time for Predator versus Mario. Once again, Mario towers over this dinosaur figure. It is probably twice the size as the Scorpio Venator dinosaur and a whole lot heavier too, maybe even twice the weight of the Scorpio Venator. This is quite lightweight, although it does have batteries and some speakers in it. Now let me know in the comments, who do you think would win, the Scorpio Venator or Mario? Just a few predators left. This next one is a very different looking one. This super long dinosaur is called the Sarcosuchus. And this one comes in the camo green coloring on the sides and underbelly with the clay red coloring along the top. Check out these rows of spines that go all the way down to its tail. And of course, it's got a huge mouth full of teeth and a very narrow mouth too. Now it's time to face it off against Mario. And first, let's check out that size difference. This Sarcosuchus figure is probably only three or four inches tall. So then Mario is probably four or maybe even five times as tall as this predator dinosaur. And I don't think we even have to compare the weights either. I think Mario is definitely heavier than this much smaller dinosaur figure. Oh, and you know what? I forgot to mention that this Sarcosuchus has an attack feature. You saw it earlier, but there's a button on its tail to move its head around and jump its jaw. So then, who do you think would win in a match? The Sarcosuchus or Mario? <laughs> and 
And here is our final predator and our smallest one. This dinosaur is called the Atrociraptor, obviously related to the Velociraptor. It has a dark orange body with some tan striping all over, including its tail, its back, and on its face too. And it's pretty adjustable. You can move the arms, the legs, the neck, and the jaw. You can open and close manually. Now this dinosaur looks pretty cool, but sadly doesn't have any attack feature. So let's go ahead and place it up against the Mario figure. And this is the biggest size difference between the Predator and Mario so far. This dinosaur is super small compared to Mario. It probably reaches only the top of Mario's leg, and it might be only like 10% of the weight of the Mario figure. So who do you think would win in a battle? The Atrociraptor figure or the Mario figure? we need to check out this Spider-Man figure. And here is the figure itself. This Spider-Man figure is pretty tall. It's probably over a foot. It of course has the Spider-Man emblem right on its chest. And it looks like you can move the arms and the elbows back and forth on both sides, which is pretty cool. Check it out. You can see that the figure is posed to shoot web out of its hands. It looks like you can move the head a little bit, although not much. And you can't move the legs up and down or back and forth at all, which is kind of a bummer. In addition, there's some extra costumes and tools in here that we'll be checking out. But first, let's check out some Jurassic World T-Rexes. This first T-Rex is a massive, super colossal, custom-painted T-Rex. It's one of my favorite T-Rexes that I have because of how realistic the coloring looks. I especially love how gritty those super dangerous teeth look, as well as the bright red eyes. Now let's compare this figure to the Spider-Man figure. First off, with the size difference, the super colossal T-Rex is definitely a whole lot larger, even though this Spider-Man figure is quite large. And I think that the T-Rex might have even more better detailing than this Spider-Man figure. But wow, I mean, look at the size difference of that. So we're gonna place this T-Rex off to the side here and bring in our next T-Rex, which is actually another super colossal Tyrannosaurus Rex. This figure has a much darker coloring compared to the first T-Rex that we saw. And this one is actually from Jurassic World Dominion. Overall, it looks pretty similar to the first T-Rex. And a really cool thing is that it actually has a stomach compartment so you can feed it smaller dinosaurs. Now let's compare that against Spider-Man. Once again, the super colossal Tyrannosaurus Rex towers over the Spider-Man figure. And although Spider-Man may be smaller, I still think he might stand a chance in a fight against a T-Rex. Let me know in the comments what you think in a battle between these two. The next T-Rex to face off against Spider-Man is this Hammond Collection T-Rex figure. Because it is part of the Hammond Collection, it's a whole lot more detailed and has better coloring than typical for most of the figures. And it even has these really cool marbled eyes. Now it's time to face it off against Spider-Man, but first, why don't we check out some of these other accessories for Spider-Man? And the first accessory that we're gonna check out is this right here. It may not look like much, but these are actually web blasters. So let's snap these on, just like that, and the other side, and then we'll load it with these web pieces right here. And now Spider-Man has two web blasters, one on each arm. Let's check out that web shooting in action. All right, it shoots pretty far, probably around three or four feet, and they are very easy to reload just like that. So here they are, the Spider-Man figure right next to the Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex. And it looks like this time, the Spider-Man figure is actually a little bit taller than the T-Rex. Now let me know in the comments below, which of these two figures do you like the best? The next T-Rex is this Stomp and Escape T-Rex. It's got the classic brown coloring with some gray detailing along its back. And it has a single massive action button right here on its back for a roaring action. Now let's face the T-Rex off versus Spider-Man. Now look at the size difference between these two. Spider-Man stands way taller, maybe almost two times as tall as this T-Rex right here. But now let's see if this web blaster can do any damage against the T-Rex. All right, the T-Rex is unfazed. Next up is an even newer T-Rex from the Dino Tracker series. This T-Rex has a much lighter coloring on its body, especially with this bright tan yellow with the gray striping along the top. And of course, it's got this really cool headpiece 
and it's like a soft rubber, so it fits on really easily. And it's got an action button on its back for a chomping action. So let's face it off against the Spider-Man figure. Ooh, you know what? This T-Rex is a little bit closer to the same height as Spider-Man. It's getting pretty close again, so Spider-Man better watch out. This is the Terran T-Rex figure. Now this figure has a more gray coloring along its body, but this figure is pretty special because it actually has two action buttons on its back. One for swinging the tail, and the other button here for doing a massive tearing action. Now let's bring in Spider-Man to face them off. Now these two figures are extremely close in height. There's probably only an inch or two difference. Spider-Man's got his web shooters that we've already checked out, but let's see what this tearing action can do against Spider-Man. He can knock him down. That is a massive swinging action. Pretty cool. Next up for the T-Rexes is this brown and orange T-Rex figure right here. I think this came out as part of Fallen Kingdom. And this figure is pretty special because it actually has this reflective pink red coloring right along the tip of its face. But let's see how it does against Spider-Man. Oh, this figure is quite a bit smaller than Spider-Man right here. And you know what? Let's go ahead and add on some of Spider-Man's accessories. We are going to be putting on this gold and black suit. So let's put on on the chest piece, just like that, super easy. And now let's put on the mask right over the red mask. That's interesting, the mask looks a little bit crooked. It actually looks like the plastic is bent a little bit, so his face looks a little crooked. So now it is the black and gold Spider-Man versus the smaller tan and a little bit reflective red T-Rex. Now here I've got an original Jurassic World Tyrannosaurus Rex, meaning it was from the first movie. And that also means that this figure was made by Hasbro and not Mattel, as many of the new figures are. This figure has a few cool features. First off is a stomping sound effect action. You press down on its feet, you can hear that sound effect. And then there is a chomping action which you can activate by pressing up on a tail. Check that out, it chomps down super fast. Now it's time for the T-Rex and Spider-Man to face off and the T-Rex looks ready to fight. Although the T-Rex is quite a bit smaller than the Spider-Man figure. In fact, this T-Rex is almost small enough that it seems like this Spider-Man figure could almost ride on top of this T-Rex, which would be pretty funny. The next T-Rex is this bright red and black Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now this figure is pretty cool because it is actually custom colored, so you won't see this coloring anywhere else and it's custom colored to kind of look like flames. And of course it has the button on its head for the chomping action. So now let's face this T-Rex off against the amazing Spider-Man. And check that out. It's almost like they are matching in coloring. They both got the bright red and the black on them. Although the T-Rex has a lot more red on its body than the black and gold version of the Spider-Man does. Next up is this battle damage Tyrannosaurus Rex figure with the brown coloring and the gray detailing along the top. Now this figure doesn't have an attack button to activate the chomping, but you can just open and close its mouth manually. But it does have a button on its back right here to turn the battle damage on and off. So now let's face this T-Rex off against Spider-Man. Before we do that, let's change Spider-Man to add his final accessories. First up is a new chest piece and a mask that's going to replace the black and gold right here. And then the coolest part, his robotic spider leg. Now here is Spider-Man in his largest form with the robotic spider legs coming right out of his back. Plus there's the new chest piece here with a lot more gold that looks pretty cool and a new mask that's all red and has larger white eyes. So let's face Spider-Man off against the T-Rex. Now the T-Rex is pretty close to Spider-Man's size, although the T-Rex is a little bit shorter. And it is really cool that this T-Rex has a battle damage button right on its side. But I have to say, these robotic arms that come out of Spider-Man's back are really cool and I think make Spider-Man the winner in this versus competition. But let me know in the comments, who do you think of these two deserves to win? And now it's time for that surprise I was telling you about. I've actually got an additional Spider-Man figure right here. This is the Infinity Saga Spider-Man from the Civil War era. And here it is. This figure is a whole lot smaller than the other Spider-Man figure. In fact, here is the size difference between the two. This smaller Spider-Man figure doesn't even make it all the way up to his waist. And the larger Spider-Man figure's head might be five or six times the size of this smaller figure here. But that doesn't make this Spider-Man figure worse because check out how poseable this figure is. You can pose his elbows, his shoulders, his torso, his neck, his knees, his ankles 
almost everything like you could in real life. Plus it comes with some accessories that we'll be trying out too in a little bit. Now the first T-Rex to face off with this Spider-Man figure is this hybrid Dilophosaurus figure. And this figure is from the first Jurassic World movie and it's pretty special. It's got some battle damage on the side. It's got the gold reflective paint on the top and overall just looks like a crazy amazing T-Rex figure. Now let's face this T-Rex off against the smaller Spider-Man figure. Now it looks like the Spider-Man figure is still standing taller with the Dilophosaurus reaching around his chest. This Spider-Man figure is pretty detailed, which is really cool, as is the Dilophosaurus figure. You can see its skin texturing, you can see that battle damage, and as a bonus, it actually has a chomping action. Check that out. The next dinosaur here is the Sound Surge Tyrannosaurus Rex from Jurassic World Dominion. It's got the classic brown coloring with that same gray detailing along its neck. And most importantly, it has a button on its back to activate the sound effects. Now let's face this off against the Spider-Man. Right off the bat, you can see that the Sound Surge T-Rex here is quite a bit smaller than this Spider-Man figure. With the way that the T-Rex is currently standing, there's a few inches above but if you place it down over here, Spider-Man looks to be around the shoulder height of the T-Rex. I will have to say though, the Spider-Man figure is a lot more detailed and intricate because you can pose it in so many different ways and it looks super realistic. Whereas the T-Rex figure here is from the Sound Surge collection, so it's a bit on the cheaper side. There's no button to open and close its mouth and the painting design is a little bit underwhelming. And here is the last T-Rex of the collection. This is a juvenile T-Rex in the green coloring with the darker green detailing along its back and on its head. Now let's face it off against the Spider-Man figure. Now this juvenile T-Rex is pretty small so it only comes up to the waist of this smaller Spider-Man figure. Now why don't we go ahead and swap out these accessories on this Spider-Man figure. And here is the Spider-Man with the new accessories added on. Spider-Man's mask is now taken off to reveal Peter Parker underneath. And I swapped out one of his hands to change from a fist into the web slinging action. And here they are side by side once again. I forgot to mention earlier as well that the T-Rex actually has a chomping action, which is pretty cool. And all in all, both of these are really cool figures. Let's first start by checking out the Iron Man figure. And here is the figure. I believe it stands at seven inches tall. And this is a pretty intricate and very well detailed figure. It is super adjustable. You can move basically all of the joints like you could in real life. And it's got some pretty great coloring too. You've got the silver, of course, the bright red and then the gold. And all in all, you know, I'm uh, pretty impressed with this figure. Plus it came with some extra accessories that we will check out in a bit. But now it's time to meet our first epic evolution dinosaur of the collection. This is the Jurassic World Neo Venator. And as part of the Epic Evolution series, you can see that this dinosaur lives in what looks like a area with rivers and mountains. And right off the bat, I do like the coloring of this dinosaur. It's pretty different compared to many of the other species that I have, with the dark blue, green, gray, and then the yellow on its face. And since this is from Epic Evolution, it has an evolving ability with this little dial on its back that you spin, Let's check out and see what happens. Lifts up its head for a chomping action, and then right on top of its head here, you can see some spikes that you can actually just pull out for the evolving for its battle mode. Those are some crazy looking spikes. Kind of looks like a mohawk in a funny way. And now it's time for the first face-off of this collection, the Neovenator versus Iron Man. And it looks like they are right about the same height. The Neovenator is a little bit taller with these spikes, but when you lower it, it's a little bit shorter than Iron Man over here. And for the most part, they've got different color combos going on. The Neo Venator with some cooler tones and Iron Man with the red tones, but they both have that yellow gold coloring. Now, who do you think would win in a battle, Iron Man or the Neo Venator? The 
next epic evolution dinosaur is another big one. This is the new gigantic Trackers Triceratops. Now this Triceratops has quite some different coloring and texturing compared to many of the older Triceratops figures that I have. The packaging says that this Triceratops lives in the mountain regions, possibly where there's snow, so it makes more sense that it's more light colored to blend into those lighter surroundings. And what's really interesting about the texturing on this figure is that it kind of has like these huge armor plates all over its body compared to older Triceratops that have just more normal skin texture. Now this figure has an attack feature. There is the dial on its back, like all the epic evolution figures you spin let's see what happens looks like it has a head ramming action right there so these two horns on the top of its head are its main attack weapons but there's actually more since it's an epic evolution triceratops there's actually a hidden thing that you can push up on its frill to reveal more spikes on the top of its frill for its battle mode. Now it's time to face off against Iron Man. Now it looks like Iron Man is a little bit taller than the Triceratops figure, maybe just a couple inches. However, I think that the Iron Man is a lot more lightweight than the Triceratops. Let's lift this up. Oh yeah, the Triceratops is maybe two or three times the weight of the Iron Man figure. And like the previous figure that we just saw, the dinosaur has the more cooler tones of coloring going on, and Iron Man over here is in contrast to that with the bright red, gold, and silver. Comment below, who do you think would win in a battle? epic evolution dinosaur that I just bought is this Megalosaurus dinosaur. Now this dinosaur is the first of these three that has the more warmer coloring. So this one is in a brown, orangish color. You can see it's got some yellow detailing on its back, on its neck. And one of my favorite things about the new Epic Evolution series is that they have rubber teeth that look way more realistic. And of course, it's got the dial on its back there for the rampage action. Let's face off against Iron Man. Iron Man is still the taller in this competition, but let's see who weighs more. Let's see the Megalosaurus, pretty heavy because it's got a speaker and some batteries in there. And then Iron Man here, you can see that I actually added a stand so that he can stand up a bit more easily. But I definitely have to say the Megalosaurus wins in the weight competition. It is definitely a lot heavier. And while we're here, why don't we go ahead and give Iron Man these different hands. These are open hands. And here is how Iron Man looks with the open hands configuration. Much more ready to fight and to grab onto the dinosaur. Who would win, Iron Man or the Megalosaurus? Comment below. Next is another brand new figure. This is the Wild Roar Griposuchus, or Griposuchus. I'm actually not sure how to pronounce it. Now this dinosaur reminds me quite a bit of the Sarcosuchus, which as you can tell by the name, they are actually related. So this is a super long dinosaur that lays close to the ground. As the packaging says, it lives near or in the water and it's got that action dial on its back for the attack. Wow, check out those teeth too. They're so small, but they look extremely deadly. And now for the face-off, the Griposuchus versus Iron Man. And obviously, Iron Man is way taller, although if you stood up the Griposuchus like this, it is way taller than Iron Man now. And in terms of the weight, let's see here. I'd actually say they're almost identical in weight. And the Griposuchus has this really cool attack feature, but Iron Man still has more points of mobility for posing. Comment below, would Iron Man win in a battle or would the Griposuchus? Next is another epic evolution figure that I just bought. This is the Danger Pack Poposaurus. 
this figure is definitely the smallest out of what we've seen so far, and it's got those cool blue coloring with the gray underbelly, but it also has some warmer orange-brown coloring on its tail and on its face. Now let's face off the Poposaurus versus Iron Man. Now the Poposaurus is a lot smaller. It doesn't even reach the top of Iron Man's legs, and from that you can definitely assume that the dinosaur figure is a lot lighter weight than the Iron Man figure, but it's actually it's not a huge difference. And from that you can expect the Poposaurus to be a whole lot lighter weight than the Iron Man figure, but actually it's not a huge difference, so this figure must be a lot more dense than the Iron Man figure. But both these figures are looking pretty cool. Now who would win, Iron Man or the Poposaurus in a fight? Well, before we do that, why don't we add on this other accessory for Iron Man? You can see some flames, so I think you know where this is going. epic evolution dinosaur is the Allosaurus figure. I've had this figure for quite a while and it is one of my largest Allosaurus figures. It once again has these really cool realistic looking teeth. It's got the evolution feature here on its back with this little button here that you press and these spikes will pop out. And then it also has the dial on its back for chomping and roaring. It's time to face off against Iron Man. This time, the dinosaur is standing way taller than Iron Man. And it's not only taller, it is certainly a whole lot larger in all aspects. Let's see how heavy the Allosaurus is compared to Iron Man. Now, uh, you know, they're pretty close, but I still think the Allosaurus is the heavier one. Now, who would win in a battle, the Allosaurus or Iron Man? This is the Ecrixinatosaurus dinosaur figure from Epic Evolution. It's got the gray body with some light blue striping on its back and its neck, and the darker face with these two small horns in the front and a bunch of smaller horns right behind. And by using the dial on this dinosaur's back, you get the chomping action and the roaring sound effects. Now it's time to go up against Iron Man. But wait, I've actually got a little surprise. And that is, I actually bought another Iron Man figure that we'll check out right now. This set also comes with a Tony Stark and a suit. Although I gotta say, that doesn't really look a whole lot like Robert Downey Jr. But the even better part is the Mark I Iron Man suit. This figure is pretty detailed, pretty intricate. It really looks like it's made out of metal, although it is just made out of normal plastic. Although it's not quite as posable as the other Iron Man that we have, it's still pretty adjustable. You can move the shoulders, you can twist the arms, you can twist the torso, and even for a big clunky suit, you can bend the knees and move the legs. Plus, it actually comes with this little fire ball that you can insert into the launcher and then you can pull it back and launch it away. So now let's have this Mark I Iron Man face off against this dinosaur. And now these two figures are pretty similarly colored, both with the dark gray, although the Mark I Iron Man is a lot more reflective and shiny compared to the dinosaur. Now comment below who would win, the Mark I Iron Man or the Ecrixinatosaurus? This next epic evolution dinosaur is actually an herbivore. It looks pretty similar to a Stegosaurus, but is actually called a Hesperosaurus. It's got a dark green body with some lighter detailing, and its plates along the top are a brighter green color. So with all this green, I would assume that this dinosaur lives somewhere in the jungle or maybe a swamp or something like that. And this figure has one action button using this little dial button on its back. You can swing the tail back and forth. So now let's face off against the Iron Man Mark I. First off, I think the Iron Man stands a little bit taller than the Hesperosaurus. But that being said, the Hesperosaurus definitely is a whole lot bulkier, and I would assume is the heavier of the two. So let's find out, and let's check out the Iron Man. Oh yeah, the dinosaur is maybe two or three times the weight of the Mark I Iron Man. But that's probably because there's batteries and a speaker inside this thing, so that makes it a lot heavier. Now then, who do you think would win the Mark one Iron Man or the Hesperosaurus.
Next, I'm showing you two new dinosaurs at once. This first one on the left is called the Avaceratops. It's got a dark brown body with some white detailing on its back and then the white frill and then two tiny horns on the front. And then this other figure on the right here that looks kind of like a Stegosaurus is called a Tojangosaurus. And this one has a more tan coloring over most of its body with some darker detailing along the top of its back and then the orange plates running all the way along its back to the spikes on its tail. Plus, when you press down on this figure on the front, it actually swings its tail back and forth. Now let's face both of these dinosaurs off against the Mark I Iron Man. The Iron Man is obviously a lot taller, probably twice the height as these dinosaurs, but I wonder if the weight of these dinosaurs combined beats the Iron Man Mark I suit. And I think it does, just by a little bit. Now then, who do you think would win, Iron Man or these two dinosaurs? <laughs> Here are four dinosaurs all at once from the new Epic Evolution Collection. This first one on the left is a Plesiosaurus. Now Jurassic World has released this dinosaur before, but this is with new coloring, a whole lot darker than previously. Next to that, we've got the Guebasaurus dinosaur. And this one has some pretty cool coloring with this green on its back and then the black on its legs, neck, and face, and a little bit of a white stripe along its side. I like that it has all these little spikes on its head and it actually has a chunk action when you press down on its body. Then there's these two dinosaurs that actually came as a pack when I bought them. This first one is called the Eoraptor, obviously related to a Velociraptor. It's a whole lot smaller of a figure, but it has some cool coloring with the bright red on the front and all these spikes along its head, and then the dark green in the back. And then this little dinosaur is called the Steguros. I would guess that it's related to a Stegosaurus. It looks kind of similar. It stands on four legs, and it has all these spikes in the back, but it's a whole lot smaller obviously, but I do like this little green stripe that's running along its face and its side. Now it's time for the face-off against Iron Man. Four dinosaurs versus Iron Man Mark I. Now you probably remember the Mark I suit wasn't super advanced, so I don't know how it would do against four dinosaurs at once, especially one that's aquatic. I definitely don't think this suit would do well in the water. But let me know in the comments, who do you think would win in a battle? These four dinosaurs or the one Iron Man suit? And finally, let me know in the comments, which of these figures did you like the best? The Tony Stark and the Mark I Iron Man, or the much more advanced Iron Man suit that comes complete with a stand and even flames to put on the shoes and the hands. This Godzilla is the largest Godzilla figure that I have. It stands over a foot tall and it is 20 inches long from head all the way to the tail. It's got a bunch of texturing all over its body and these huge spikes right on its back. The iconic three rows of spines. And this figure has six different points of articulation, two for the arms, two for the feet, and then two different points for its tail. One up here, and then a smaller point back here. Now let's meet the first Indominus Rex to face off against Godzilla. This is my super colossal Irex. This figure was released in 2020 as part of the Primal Attack toy line. It's got huge arms with spikes on the elbows. It's also got those spikes along its neck. And coolest of all is that this Irex has a stomach compartment. So you can feed this Irex either smaller dinosaurs or in this case, a small human. And then you can release the figures in its stomach compartment right down here. Now it's time to face off against Godzilla. And first off, look at that size difference. This Godzilla figure is quite large, but it's still very small in comparison to this super colossal figure. And I'm pretty sure that Godzilla is more lightweight too. Let's check it out. And this super colossal figure, oh boy. Yep, that's probably two or three times the weight of this Godzilla figure. Now then, who do you think would win? Godzilla or the super colossal Indominus Rex? Mm -hmm. 
Our next Indominus Rex figure is the Destroy and Devour I-Rex figure. This figure stands at about eight inches tall and is actually 22 inches long from its head to its tail, so a little bit longer than Godzilla. And it's got this action button on its tail to activate the chopping action. And if you look, you can see that there's actually a little stomach compartment in its mouth to store smaller dinosaurs. And there's a secondary action right here on its back that activates its claw slashing action. Now let's face the figure off against Godzilla. So now the Indominus Rex appears to be the slightly shorter figure. But as I said earlier, the Indominus Rex is actually a little bit longer from tail to head than the Godzilla figure is. And now let's check out the weight between the two. There's the Irex, and here's the Godzilla figure. You know, they're pretty similar. I think Godzilla wins by a tiny bit when it comes to weight. Now comment below, who do you think would win? Godzilla or the Destroy and Devour Indominus Rex? <laughs> The next Indominus Rex figure is a pretty special one. This is the Dino Hybrid Indominus Rex figure. Now this figure was actually made for the first movie and it was made by Hasbro and not Mattel like these newer figures. And it's got a few special features. First off is this coloring with the bright red on its back and the gold on its hands and on its underbelly. That is very unusual for an Irex figure. It's got this hidden button right here on its back to activate the spikes. And it's also motorized, so if you pull down on its arm, its mouth actually has a chomping action. But I gotta say, the one thing I do not like about this figure is that it can't really stand up on its legs. It was just designed pretty poorly so that it has to lean back on its tail like this, as many of the older Hasbro figures have to do. Now let's face it off against Godzilla. Now off the bat, it looks like the Irex figure is taller, although it is only taller because it's leaning back on its tail. If it was actually standing, you can see that they're actually really close to the same height. But let's also see the weight difference between the two. This one has some batteries and a motor in it, so I suspect it's gonna be a lot heavier. Now let's lift up Godzilla here, and yeah, the Irex figure is a little bit heavier, not as much as I thought it would be. But now it's time, who would win, Godzilla or the hybrid Indominus Rex? Next up is the Extreme Damage Indominus Rex. This figure features more of the classic gray coloring along its body, but the cool part is when you press this button up top right here, it actually reveals the battle damage on the side. Look at that, there's some red underneath there that you can turn on and off. Plus, it's also got the button on its tail for the jaw chomping action. And look at that, even this figure has a small storage compartment in its mouth so it can eat smaller dinosaurs. Now it's time for the face off against Godzilla. This Indominus Rex figure is almost 10 inches high, so not quite as tall as the Godzilla figure, but it is longer. This figure is 23 inches long from the tail to the head, so a little bit longer than Godzilla once again. And now let's check out in terms of weight, which one's heavier. Oh, this one's pretty heavy. It's got some batteries in it. And now let's see the Godzilla here. Uh, not too much lighter, but the Indominus Rex once again is the heavier dinosaur. So now who would win, the battle damaged Indominus Rex or Godzilla? Up next for the Irexes is a custom painted Indominus Rex. Now this is actually another destroy and devour Indominus Rex, which we saw earlier back here. But this one has been meticulously repainted with these bright and exciting new colors. There's the blue along its underbelly, then it transforms into the purple here, and then the orange and black on its back. And don't forget, it's really cool chomping action. Now it's time to face off against Godzilla. Standing upright all the way here, the Indominus Rex is the taller one, although it normally stands around this height, so they're actually, once again, pretty close in size. And as with the earlier Destroy and Devour figure, they're pretty similar in weight, although I think the Irex is a little bit heavier. Now this is one crazy and dangerous looking Irex. So then, who do you think would win, Godzilla or the custom painted Irex?
This next figure is another vintage Indominus Rex. This one I believe was released in 2015 for the first Jurassic World movie. So it's pretty old and this is one of the only Indominus Rexes that I have that has this rubbery texture along its head and neck. And a cool and unique feature about this figure is when you press down on the arm, it actually chomps the jaw with sound effects. Now let's face it off against Godzilla. And these two figures are almost very close in terms of height. I think the Irex is a little bit taller generally. And the Irex is definitely the older figure, but let's see who is the heavier figure. There's the Irex and here's Godzilla. You know what, I think this time Godzilla is the heavier figure, even though the Irex has some batteries in it for the sound effects. So who do you think would win in this battle? The Irex figure from the first Jurassic World movie or Godzilla? Next, I've got a little surprise for you, and that is this new Godzilla figure from the upcoming The New Empire movie. Now let's have a look at it. First off, the blue coloring is a bit brighter compared to the older version of Godzilla. And obviously the spikes are this bright red color and that bright red goes all the way down to the tip of his tail. And check it out right here. There's actually a button for the sound effects. So let's hear some of those. So it's got those two sound effects, and overall it's pretty cool, but definitely a whole lot smaller than the older Godzilla figure that I have. And it does look like this Godzilla figure is kind of skinnier too. This larger one here is quite bulky in the torso. And here's the first Irex to face off against the new Godzilla figure. This is the Dino Trackers Irex figure. And this is one of my newest Irex figures that I've bought. You can tell that it's a bit more slim in its design compared to these other older figures. Those are huge and bulky, but this dinosaur seems a little bit more lightweight and actually a bit smaller in size overall. But it's still got some cool action features. Over here on the tail, there's a button and you can move the tail back and forth for chomping the jaw and for twisting the head back and forth. And it's got these glowing green lights coming out of its neck too. So now let's face off the Irex versus the new Godzilla figure. Now obviously in terms of size, this Irex figure is a whole lot larger. It might be two or three times the size of this Godzilla figure. And I bet it's obviously heavier as well, just given its size. Now then who do you think would win between these two? The Dino Trackers Irex or the new Empire Godzilla figure? This next figure is the Sound Surge Indominus Rex, released for Jurassic World Dominion. It's quite a bit smaller in size compared to many of the other figures that we've seen so far, but it still has the classic gray coloring with some brown detailing along its face and back, and of course the orange eyes. And the special feature of this figure is the sound effects. Right here is the speaker, and then there's a button up top, so let's hear some of those sounds. <sighs> Now let's face it off against the Godzilla figure. And now this smaller Godzilla figure is taller than the Irex. You know, probably by a good two or three inches. And now let's see which one's heavier. This one still has batteries and a speaker in it, so it's still pretty heavy. But so does this Godzilla figure. Although I think the Indominus Rex figure is slightly heavier. Now then, who would win in this battle? The Sound Surge Irex or the new Empire Godzilla? <laughs> Here is the Feeding Frenzy Indominus Rex figure, released as part of the Camp Cretaceous collection. The proportions of this Indominus Rex is very different. It's got this giant head and the smaller body. Now there's a hidden button on its nose for some sound effects. And it has a chomping action as well. First, you press down on the tail to open up its mouth, and then you feed it its food, or in my case, my finger right here, and it'll chomp down right onto the food. Now it's time to face off against Godzilla. And once again, the new Godzilla figure is slightly taller. The Feeding Frenzy figure is probably two inches shorter. And let's see in terms of weight, the Feeding Frenzy figure's decently heavy. Now let's check out the Godzilla figure. And I think the Indominus Rex is the heaviest of these two figures. Now comment below, who would win in a battle? The Feeding Frenzy Irex or Godzilla?
And the final Irex of this versus collection is this smaller Irex from the original Jurassic World movie. So this one was also made by Hasbro. Now it has a lot of the iconic gray coloring, but you'll notice that the top is this more green gray coloring, which is interesting. And it's got a few special features. First off is this hidden battle damage right on the side that you can click open to reveal its insides and some bones. And this figure has a chomping action. When you move the tail up and down, it actually moves his head up and down and closes his jaw too. So then let's have our final face off, the Irex versus Godzilla. Now this Irex figure doesn't really stand up on its own anymore. So it's kind of hard to say which figure is taller, but I would bet you that the Godzilla figure is the tallest just by guessing and trying to get him to pose in his normal position. And as for who is the heavier figure, let's see here, the Irex figure is pretty lightweight. And remember the Godzilla figure actually has batteries in it. So this one is definitely the heavier of the two. Now finally, who would win in this battle? The smaller Irex figure or the Godzilla figure? And here is the entire collection. Go ahead and comment below which of these Indominus Rex figures was your favorite. And also, which of these two Godzilla figures was your favorite, the smaller one or the larger one? First, let's check out the King Kong figure. This is the Mega Kong action figure, complete with sounds and lights. It's got a pretty adjustable body. You can move the shoulders, the arms, the wrists. You can also move the head back and forth and even open and close the jaw a little bit too. He's also got this massive battle ax right here. And a really cool part is that his torso is actually spring loaded. So you can swing this battle ax back and forth. And he's got a button hidden on the back here for lighting up his eyes and for the sound effects. And those same sound effects and light effects on his eyes activate when you swing his torso too. Check out those glowing red eyes, that's pretty cool. Now let's meet the first Jurassic World Predator to face off against King Kong. This is the old super colossal Velociraptor blue figure. Now this isn't my oldest super colossal figure, but it's definitely older than a lot of the ones I have. It has the medium green body with the iconic blue stripe running down the side. She's got some really cool intricate colored eyes. And my favorite part is that like all the super colossal figures, you can open up its mouth and feed it smaller dinosaurs or a human and it has a stomach compartment. And now it's time to face off against Kong. And first off, you can see that the super colossal figure is quite a bit taller and it's not even standing up all the way. This King Kong figure, I believe is 13 inches high and the super colossal figure is way higher than that. So I don't even know how tall Velociraptor Blue actually is. Now in terms of weight, let's see. This King Kong figure is pretty heavy. It's got some batteries in it, but this super colossal figure is quite a bit larger and it's probably twice the weight of the King Kong figure. Although I've got to say the King Kong figure definitely outcompetes the super colossal figure because it has the swinging torso ability. It has some lights and sound effects in it as well. So then who do you think would win in a battle? The King Kong figure or or the super colossal Velociraptor Blue. The next Jurassic World Predator is the Strike and Roar Giganotosaurus Dinosaur. This dinosaur species was featured in the Jurassic World Dominion movie. It's got some pretty unique coloring and design on its body, and I love the teeth on this figure. It also features a double jointed tail for more realistic movement, and it features two really cool attack features. The first is a button on top of its tail, and it swings its entire torso around for a chomping action. And the second attack button is hidden underneath its tail for a classic chomping and roaring action. So let's face it off against the King Kong figure. And we can see that even at full height, the Giganotosaurus is quite a bit shorter than this King Kong figure. Although just by the look of it, it looks like a pretty evenly matched fight. And let's see in terms of weight, let's check out the Giganotosaurus, yeah, decently heavy. Now let's check out King Kong. King Kong is definitely heavier. It's surprising, but I think this King Kong figure has a lot of solid plastic in it. It doesn't seem super hollow, which is very surprising. And between these two figures, they've both got their own set of attacks and sound effects. So then who do you think would win in a battle? The Giganotosaurus Predator Dinosaur or King Kong? Now 
for the Predators, up next I've got the Camouflage and Battle Indominus Rex figure. This Irex figure is a bit smaller than most of the Irex figures that I have, but it still has the same great detailing. It's got these spikes along its neck, as well as these really cool looking teeth. And it has adjustable arms and legs, and you can use the tail to move the head around, as well as chomp the jaw with the sound effects. And if you'll notice right here, it's pretty faint, but you can actually see a glowing green light inside of its neck and inside of its body. And that's how it got the camouflage and battle name. Now let's face it off against King Kong. And I think these two figures are actually very close in size. The Irex figure might be a little bit taller when it's standing at its full height like this, but let's see in terms of weight, which one is heavier. And I bet you King Kong is heavier. This guy weighs a ton. Let's check out the Irex, decently heavy, but yep, King Kong is definitely heavier. And both of these figures have some pretty cool attack features. Kong with his swinging punches and the Irex with its moving head and its chomp action. So then, who do you think would win, King Kong or the Camouflage and Battle Irex? On to the next Predator Dinosaur, and this one is the Camp Cretaceous Extreme Chompin' Spinosaurus. This one's a slightly older figure, although it's pretty common. It's got the classic brown coloring with the red spine and the red on its face. And as you can tell by the name, it's got an extreme chompin' action. Now then, let's face it off against King Kong, although you probably noticed that this is actually a different King Kong figure. This is the next largest King Kong figure that I have. It is also from the MonsterVerse toy line. It's got the battle scarring on his chest right there, and you can move the head around a little bit, although you can't open and close the mouth. You can move the arms and twist the wrists, as well as move the legs. But this figure was a little bit less expensive, so it actually doesn't come with any sound effects or any special features like that. So then putting them back side by side, you can see that the Spinosaurus is a little bit taller, only by maybe a few inches. But let's see who is the heavier figure. This is a pretty lightweight figure because there's no batteries or anything complicated in it. And this Spinosaurus also doesn't have any batteries in it, so you know what? They're pretty close. I think the Spinosaurus might be a little bit heavier. And by comparison, you can see that the King Kong figure's painting is a little bit less detailed than the Spinosaurus. We've got different colors going on, and overall it's just a lot more cool to look at. But regardless, who do you think would win in a battle, this King Kong or the Spinosaurus figure. our first T-Rex in this entire collection. Now this figure is pretty unique. This is actually the T-Rex from the Legacy Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex Ambush Attack Pack. It's got the all green body, even the underbelly. It has a little bit of brown and yellow detailing right on the top of its back. And you can move its tiny arms, its legs, and its tail. And of course you can move the head around and there's a button at the top of the head for the chomping action. Now then it's time to face off against King Kong. And in terms of height, these figures are very similar. The T-Rex might be a little bit taller, or if you point its head upwards, look at that, it's way taller now. And in terms of weight, who do you think is gonna be heavier? Let's first check out the T-Rex. Uh, decently heavy, kind of a medium, and then we've got the King Kong figure. It's actually very close in the same weight, which is surprising because King Kong is so much bigger in size than the T-Rex figure. So who do you think would win in a battle? King Kong or the Legacy Collection T-Rex? This is the Epic Attack Carnotaurus figure. And this is a pretty recent figure. They released it probably within the last year, I think. It has some of the best and most intricate coloring out of the Carnotaurus figures that I have. And it's got a few pretty cool features as well. First, you can move the tail to move the head around. There's also a button on its back for a chomping action with sound effects. And a feature exclusive to the Epic Attack series are these buttons on the side that when you press, they light up and have more sound effects. Now then, let's face off against King Kong, and here is another of my King Kong figures. This one is around the same height as the last, but it's a bit more slim in its arms and its legs, and the coloring is a lot lighter too. This is a much lighter brown. It still has the battle scar on his chest too. And this figure's mouth is in an open roaring pose, as opposed to the last one whose mouth was closed. 
Now then, it looks like the King Kong figure is standing a little bit higher than the Carnotaurus, maybe just by a few inches. And in terms of weight, let's see, the King Kong here, pretty medium weight, and the Carnotaurus. It's got some batteries and stuff in it, so it is a little bit heavier than the King Kong figure, which is surprising given their difference in overall size. So who do you think would win, King Kong or the Epic Attack Carnotaurus? This next figure is the Camp Cretaceous slash and battle Scorpios Rex. And this is one crazy looking dinosaur, which was actually invented in the Jurassic World movies. And this figure's got three special features. The first is a jaw chomping action. The second is an arm slashing action. And then finally, its tail is actually spring-loaded, so you can swing it back and forth to hit other dinosaurs with these poisonous quills. Now let's face it off against King Kong, and the King Kong figure is way taller than Scorpios Rex. So it may be a smaller dinosaur, but that doesn't make it any less dangerous. Now let's see which figure is the heavier figure. We've got King Kong here, now let's check out the Scorpios Rex. Surprisingly, even though the Scorpios Rex has batteries and other things inside of its body, the King Kong figure is still the heavier figure. Now then, who do you think would win, the fearsome Scorpius Rex or King Kong? Next up for the Predators is a Suchomimus dinosaur. Now Mattel has released a few different versions of this dinosaur. The other version is an all yellow with brown, but this one is the blue with yellow detailing. And it features movable arms, legs, and a tail. And it's got a single action button on its back for chomping. Now let's face it off against King Kong, but this is another new King Kong figure. This one's a bit smaller, but a whole lot poseable. This is actually a model King Kong, so you can see that you can move all of his limbs in a super lifelike way. And he does have quite a bit better detailing and texturing compared to the older figures. Now in terms of size, it looks like the Suchomimus is slightly taller than King Kong, but in weight, let's see, the Suchomimus figure is pretty lightweight. And now let's lift up the King Kong figure. This one is very heavy. This one seems like another solid plastic plastic figure, so it is definitely heavier than the Suchomimus. So who do you think would win a battle, the King Kong or the Suchomimus? This predator is the Endoraptor from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. It's another one of the dinosaurs they invented in the movie, and it is a very dangerous dinosaur. This figure was released for that movie, so it's a pretty old figure, but it's quite poseable. You can move its arms in all directions, as well as its legs and its tail, and it doesn't have any action buttons or anything like that, but it's pretty cool how poseable it is. And now it's time for the face-off, and with the Endoraptor in the crawling pose here, it is quite a bit shorter than the King Kong figure, although of course I'm sure it'd be much taller if it stood up in the upright position. But let's go ahead and see the weight difference between the two. The Endoraptor is pretty heavy for its size, but I think this Kong figure is definitely heavier because once again, it's that solid plastic or whatever is on the inside of this Kong figure. So then who would win in a battle, King Kong or the fearsome Endoraptor? Here's our final predator and one of my favorite dinosaur species, the Allosaurus. This figure comes in the light brown and dark blue coloring. It features the movable arms, the legs, and the tail. And it's got a dial at the top of its back for the chomping with sound effects. So let's face it off against King Kong, and here is another new King Kong figure. I think this is the smallest out of the ones I've shown you so far. It has some pretty decent detailing, although the coloring is kind of all the same aside from on its chest, and it still has the battle damage right there on its chest as well. So when we put them side by side, it looks like the Allosaurus stands a little bit taller than King Kong. And in terms of weight, let's see, wow, this King Kong figure is super lightweight. I bet this thing is entirely hollow. And let's go ahead and lift up the Allosaurus, oh yeah, this is probably like three or four times the weight of King Kong. It's got batteries and all sorts of stuff. So who do you think would win in a fight? This Allosaurus or King Kong? So then, here are all of my figures from this versus competition. All of the King Kongs and all of the Predators. Which of these Predator figures was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. There's a ton in here. And which of these Kong figures was your favorite? I've got the biggest ones all the way down to the smallest ones. 
The first dinosaur is this massive Indominus Rex Predator from the new Dino Tracker series. It has a button on the tail to activate the sound effects and chomping. And check out that green lighting in its neck too. Next up is another massive predator. This is the Spinosaurus. And this one is actually pretty special because it is in the battle damage edition. And you can see the battle damage right here on the side that you can open right up and press a button to spin around. Way in the back here, this predator is another Indominus Rex. And this one is the extreme battle damage edition. Check that out. You can turn on and off the battle damage with the sound effects. And you can press the button on its tail for the chomping action. Next up, I've got a Giganotosaurus figure. This figure is almost as large as the Indominus Rex figures, and it has a button on its back to swing the torso around, as well as chomp its jaw open and shut. Next up is the new 93 Real Feel Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. It has the all red body and it actually has a stomach compartment so you can feed it smaller dinosaurs. Way in the back here is a custom painted Indominus Rex. It's been changed to be camouflage green and they added a bunch of blood around its jaw. Here is the Dino Trackers Tyrannosaurus Rex figure with the headpiece and it has one button on its back for the chomping action. Next up is another Indominus Rex figure, but this one is actually a hybrid one from the first Jurassic World movie. It's got some hidden spikes that you can pop up, and it's even battery operated for some jaw chomping action. This predator is the Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. It features an extremely poseable body and amazing detailing and coloring. Here is another battle damaged dinosaur. This one is the T-Rex edition. And right on its side, just like the Indominus Rex, it has the battle damage that you can turn on and off. Next up is this huge Triceratops figure. This is a whole lot larger than my other Triceratops and it comes in the classic brown coloring. Next up is the Grab and Growl Endoraptor figure from Fallen Kingdom. It has an action button for slashing its arms and for chomping its jaw. This is the Scorpios Rex figure from Camp Cretaceous. It has a dark green body and is fairly poseable. You can move the arms, the legs, and the tail and manually open and close the mouth. Here is the Pyroraptor figure from Jurassic World Dominion. This is the basic edition, so you can move its arms, its legs, and its tail, but you can't open and close the jaw. Here is a crazy looking Dilophosaurus figure from the first Jurassic World movie. It's got neon colors all over and a bit of battle damage right on the side. This next figure is the Sound Surge Tyrannosaurus Rex figure from Jurassic World Dominion. It's a lot smaller in size and there's a button on its back for the sound effects. Now here's one massive predator figure. This is the Allosaurus in the Battle Damage Edition. So just like the Spinosaurus we saw earlier, it has battle damage right on the side. This dinosaur I believe is called the Kentrosaurus. It looks a lot like a Stegosaurus and it has these massive spikes right on its side. And there's an action button on its back to flip those spikes back and forth. Here is a Carcharodontosaurus figure in the blue, brown, and orange edition. And it has a single action button on its back for a chomping motion. Up next from the new Dino Tracker series is the Sino Tyrannus figure. It's got this cool headpiece that goes all the way down to its back and it has two action buttons, one for chomping the jaw and one for swinging the tail. Here is a Cryolophosaurus figure, I believe from Camp Cretaceous. It is in the dark blue version. And on this figure, you can move the tail around to move the head with sound effects. This is another big predator figure. This is a Carnotaurus figure. This one's a bit older. It has the bright orange and red coloring and the button on its tail for chomping its jaw. And here is a newer Carnotaurus figure. This one is from Dino Trackers. You can see it still has very similar coloring, but this version actually has some buttons on its side for sound effects and lighting. Plus there is a chomping action button as well. This figure is the Stegosaurus figure in the dark blue gray coloring. And it has a single action button on its back for swinging the tail back and forth. Oh, you know what? It looks like I've actually got two versions of this same figure. So these are twin dinosaurs right here. Up next is another Endoraptor figure, I believe also from Fallen Kingdom. This figure features a fully poseable body, but no action buttons. Next is an Iguanodon figure from Jurassic World Dominion, and it features an action button when you press down on its back. This brightly colored dinosaur, I believe is called a Scudosaurus. Check out those huge horns right underneath its chin. Here's another Indominus Rex figure. This one is from the first Jurassic World movie and it features the battle damage right on the side that you can hide and reveal. 
Plus, it's got an attack action when you press down on the tail. This next figure is a baby Stegosaurus figure. This one came out pretty recently. I really love the green coloring on this. And I've got another baby dinosaur in here. This one is the juvenile Nasudoceratops figure. And for the final figure in this first bin is a Minmi figure in the bright green coloring with spikes all over its back. Now it's time for the second bin, but before we do, let's check out this brand new Camp Cretaceous figure, the Gallimimus from the Fierce Force series. So it's a pretty small figure, probably around the same size as my other Gallimimus figures. Got some pretty cool camo coloring with the green on the sides and the brown on the top, and it looks like there's a single action button for moving its head up and down. Now let's check out this massive predator, the Mosasaurus. This is obviously an aquatic dinosaur, and it is a super long figure. Over here, I've got another Spinosaurus figure. This is the Legacy Collection version, so it has the dark green coloring with the red spine, and of course, the jaw chomping button on the top of its head. Here's another predator, and this figure's pretty old. Once again, from the first Jurassic World movie, this is another Indominus Rex. And this figure has some real feel skin, so its head and its neck are a soft rubber, and there's an action that when you press down on its arm, it actually opens up its mouth. <laughs> Next up is another battle damage T-Rex, but this one does not have the battle damage right here on the side. Instead, it has it painted on its neck, on its chin, and other parts of its body as well. And here's another Carnotaurus figure, but this is the Sound Surge edition, so it's a whole lot smaller, and it has a single button on its back for the sound effects. <laughs> Check out this new Endoraptor figure from the Dino Tracker series. It has a chomping action when you move its arms, and another chomping action when you press down on its back. This figure is from Camp Cretaceous, I believe. This is the Scorpios Rex figure. It has the yellow underbelly and the black sides, and it's got two action buttons, one to operate its jaw, and another to operate its arms. Here is the new Legacy Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. I bought this one quite recently. It's got some really cool green coloring with the gray and yellow on top and the button on top of its head for chomping. Next up is the Hammond Collection Metriacanthosaurus figure. It's got some really cool coloring and some orange on its nose. And like all Hammond Collection figures, features a fully poseable body. This Predator figure is an Atrociraptor from Jurassic World Dominion. It is the basic series, so you can move its arms, its legs, and its tail, but you can't open or close its mouth. Check it out, here's another Mosasaurus figure, but this one's a whole lot smaller and it's from the first movie. It's even got some battle damage right there on the side that you can open and close. And this gigantic figure is the Stegosaurus from the Dino Tracker series. It has this huge backpack and two action buttons. The first swings its tail up and down, and the second on the other side swings its tail side to side. Next up, this crazy looking predator is called the Ichthyovenator. It's got some bright green coloring on its body and a single attack action for chomping its jaw. Here is a Ceratosaurus figure in the dark green and black coloring. And it's got an action button on its back for jaw chomping. And here's another Ceratosaurus figure. This one's a bit older. I think it might be from the Fallen Kingdom collection. It's got totally different coloring and a single button on its back for jaw chomping. This figure is an Allosaurus figure. It's got the bright blue, dark blue, and tan coloring, and two action buttons on its back, one for chomping the jaw and one for moving its arms. This figure is the Ankylosaurus figure in the clay red, brown, and tan coloring. And it has a single attack feature. When you press down on its body, it swings its tail back and forth. Here is the Albertosaurus figure in the green coloring with the battle damage on the side that you can open and close. This big figure is the Therizinosaurus from Jurassic World Dominion. It features a tail that can move the torso around and a button for jaw chomping. Here is the Metriacanthosaurus figure in the yellow and green coloring, and it has a single action button on its back for chomping its jaw. I've got a Velociraptor figure here. This is from the first Jurassic World movie, so you can actually only move its arms and its legs. Its mouth is stuck open. Here is the Hammond Collection Triceratops figure. It's in the classic brown coloring, and just like the other Hammond Collection figures, is super poseable and quite detailed. Here is another Scorpios Rex figure. This is the basic edition, so you can move its arms, its legs, and its tail, but you can't open and close the jaw, and it's quite a narrow dinosaur. Look how thin that is. Here is the Dryptosaurus figure from the Dino Tracker series, and it features an attack button on its back for chomping. I've got another Allosaurus figure in here with the tan and blue coloring, and the single action button on its back for the chomping and sound effects. 
Up next is a smaller Carnotaurus figure from Jurassic World Dominion. It features the dark green and orange coloring, and you can tell it's missing a horn, just like in the movie. This figure is the Ceratosaurus figure from Camp Cretaceous, and it's got the action button on its back for the roaring and sound effects. From the Dino Tracker series is this new Diabloceratops figure in the bright red coloring, and it has the action button on its back for sound effects and moving its head. Here's a similar looking dinosaur. This is a Triceratops figure in the green and brown coloring, and it's got two actions on its back, one for moving its head and the other for moving its tail. Here is the Eocarcharia figure from the Dino Tracker series. It's got feather texturing all over its body and a single action button on its back for the sound effects. Next up is a Baryonyx figure in the bright green coloring, and it has that same action button on its back for the chomping action. This crazy looking dinosaur is called the Irritator. It's got tons of different colors on its body and the action button on its back to move its head around with sound effects. And here is yet another Endoraptor figure. This one is the basic edition, so you can move its arms, its legs, and its tail. And it still has that really awesome coloring. This is the Hammond Collection Concavenator figure with the blue, the bright orange, and a little bit of brown coloring. Also from the Hammond Collection is this Irritator figure. It is in the gray and yellow coloring and it has some really awesome detailing all over its whole body. And I've got another Triceratops figure. This one is from Jurassic World Dominion, and when you press down on its back, you get a roaring action. This is the Baryonyx Grim figure with the tan, bright green, and dark green coloring. And with this figure, you can use the tail to control the head. Here's another Hammond Collection figure. This one is the Ankylosaurus figure. So it is super poseable just like the others, and it's quite a bit larger compared to my other Ankylosaurus figures. Next up, this crazy looking dinosaur is called the Sarcosuchus. And with this figure, you can use the tail to control the head and chomp the jaw. Next from the Amber Collection, this predator is the Velociraptor. It comes in the brown with darker brown striping and is super poseable. Here is the Sound Surge Giganotosaurus figure. It's a whole lot smaller compared to the Giganotosaurus that I showed you earlier, and let's check out those sound effects. This is a basic Velociraptor figure in the orange coloring check out those bright yellow eyes. Next up is a pretty wild looking figure. This is a Dilophosaurus figure. And when you press down on the tail, you get a chomping action. And here we've got another Dilophosaurus figure, but this one actually has the frills that you can pull out to the front. Here is another Velociraptor figure from the first Jurassic World movie. So you can adjust its legs and its arms, but you can't control its mouth or its tail. And here's our first winged dinosaur of this collection. This is a gigantic Pteranodon figure in the red and blue coloring. Next up is this Allosaurus figure in the dark green, white, and red coloring, and it has the action button on its back for the chomping and sound effects. This figure is the Regalus Ceratops from the new Dino Trackers series. It's got a bright yellow body and an action button on its back for moving its head with sound effects. Here is a Pyroraptor figure from the Gujitsu series. This figure is super stretchy, and if you look close inside, you can see that there's actually feathers inside of the goo. This is a hybrid T-Rex Dilophosaurus figure from the first Jurassic World movie. It's super bright with this orange and the shiny gold on top, and it's even got some battle damage on the side. Also from the first Jurassic World movie is this miniature Spinosaurus figure. It also has the battle damage on the side, and you can control the head by moving the tail. Here is a smaller Velociraptor figure in the yellow and brown coloring. And check it out, it's got the battle damage right on the sides that you can open and close. Here is a Herrerasaurus figure in the green and brown coloring. And check that out, it also has the battle damage right there on the side. Look at this, I've got the Velociraptor Beta figure, and it even has a little dial on its back so that you can open and close its mouth. Here is an Allosaurus figure from the first Jurassic World movie. It's got the bright yellow and red on its body, and you can use the tail to control the head. I've got another winged dinosaur here. This one is a Dimorphodon figure in the bright red with some orange and yellow on its wings. Here's another Dilophosaurus figure. This one is mostly purple, but it 
has tons of yellow, orange, and red on its frills. And check this out. Here's a bunch more Velociraptor figures. This first one is green and brown, and it has some green specks on its side, which is pretty cool. Here is a miniature Hammond Collection Velociraptor. So this figure is super poseable. There's also this classic brown Velociraptor figure with the reflective green eyes. And then I've got two Velociraptor blue figures in here. This first one is a classic one without any special features. But this one right here is actually spring-loaded in the legs, so it'll actually jump up into the air when you press down on it. Oh, looks like I missed a few other raptor figures. I've got a sneaking green velociraptor figure here, and I've got a white with brown stripes atrociraptor figure. Here is a monolophosaurus from Camp Cretaceous in the dark green, yellow, and red coloring. There's this Stigimaloc figure in the red-orange coloring with the striping on the sides, and with an attack that when you press down on its tail, it activates the headbutting action. Here is another Gallimimus figure, but this one is in a tan coloring and it has some striping along the top. Next, there's this smaller dinosaur that I actually can't remember the name of this species, but it has some pretty cool red and blue coloring. Next is another winged dinosaur. This is another Pteranodon figure. It's mostly gray, but it looks like it has some purple detailing on its face and on its feet. And there's a single action button on its back for flapping the wings. And there's this weird looking little dinosaur. I think it might be an Atrociraptor. You can actually turn it on so it's battery operated. And then it'll move around. And it's got some sound effects too. Next up in this collection are a few Snap Squad figures. I believe this first one here is a T-Rex figure. I've also got the Dilophosaurus figure in this collection. And then finally, an older Carnotaurus figure. And for the final four, I've got a bunch of super miniature figures. I've got Velociraptor Blue in the super tiny figure. There's also this Endoraptor figure in the crawling pose. And here is a Stegosaurus figure with the brown and green coloring. And finally, but certainly not least, a miniature Mosasaurus figure. Want to see more dino videos? Click the subscribe button now.